What up, YouTube world? Foster on Feds and Fighting. I just did that little video about how I got into foster homes, but I forgot to tell you the emotions that I went through when I went through it. Okay, so look, man, there was a lot of um, a lot of guilt, a lot of self doubt, a lot of scared, scared, really scared, and I and I can only imagine how scared it also gonna be for the foster families or foster parents having a new kid that they're gonna have to accumulate to because they don't know the kid's history. So I know it's hard for them as well. So my heart goes out to them, to the ones that really care about kids, right? Um, if you're going to get into this business where, where you take care of foster kids and, and all that, man, make sure you do it with a good heart. Don't do it just for money. There's good and bad in every, in every profession. So I'm just saying, um, just realize that, man, you're, you're going to change someone's life. Um, you could either make their life become better or become worse. So, um. Like I said, if you get into that field, please be doing it with a good heart. I know how that I know that this foster child, how they feel. I know exactly hands on how they feel. Um, don't let them feel used. Don't let them feel like they ain't good enough. If you have biological kids and you have foster children, she, it's hard. It's easier to say it than it be done. But try to make them as close as you can as them being a real child. Don't ever give them a slight difference of how they're not. Um, the thing that I do wanna say though, while growing up in foster homes, I met a lot of people that I still mess with to this day. They are my foster brothers and I don't even call them foster brothers anymore. I call them, those are my brothers. Um, rest in peace to my brother, uh, Tony Valencia, AKA Tony Martinez. Um, that's one guy right there that that he's my brother. He will always be a younger brother. So like I said, growing up like this, you meet a lot of people that become your real family. Blood doesn't make you family. Family, loyalty will make you family. And these guys right here, like I said, I've, I'm, I still mess with this certain group that we all grew up in foster homes together that are part of my crew that that. I love them. I love them with all my heart. I love, to be honest with you, I love them probably more than I love some of my real family because I grew up and was raised with these people. So with that being said, man, like I said, um, be mindful of these youth foster kids going into your homes because you know you don't even know how scared they are. Um, don't make them feel like there's some kind of person that's just there so you can... Uh, um, like I've been in foster homes where the where the 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 uh what is it uh where their words and actions were like oh this is the new foster kid then that's not gonna make them feel any good at all I promise you so if you're hearing this and your foster parents just realize that you can't be using that kind of language that kind of that kind of talk because uh that that makes a kid think like what do they mean so um there's there's these kids go through it. I can only imagine because like I said, I was my first language is Spanish. So so these kids go through it. They go through it mentally really bad. Um they're gonna have a whole bunch of um they're gonna have a whole bunch of of not feeling wanted. They're gonna be feeling that growing up. That's just a fact. I don't know why, but that's just the fact of how we feel growing up. Um now now, when I started becoming an adult, my whole perspective changed in life. So I ended up, money made me evil. When I got into the feds part of my stories, you're going to realize that the money that I started making illegal money, it made me evil. So before that, I know I was timid. I was shy. I was, uh, I was scared. I cared about what people thought, um, all that, all that happened. Um, so Life wasn't easy just to uh, to navigate for someone like me at that moment, at that young, tender age. It wasn't easy at all. I had to overcome a lot of barriers, a lot of uh, a lot of mental barriers. You know what I'm saying? So just know that these kids right here, they're worth something. You know what I'm saying? These kids right here, they'll be great. You got to learn them and show them and push them to be great. You got to make them find something they love. Like me personally, I wish I would have found about, out about jujitsu at that age. And I had foster parents pushing to me to do something at that age. Because you know what? I love jujitsu. So that to me, I felt like that would have been that would have been an amazing art, uh, martial art to, to give me confidence. You know what I'm saying? So 
I wish that would have happened. I remember that one foster home I was talking about. They did put me in sports. They put me in baseball for a, for a season. Didn't even hit one ball. Straight up. I sucked. I knew that wasn't my calling. I'm just saying. I think I think my whole team, we won our first game and lost like 25 games after that. We're ghetto. We started trying to fight the other teams because we're, we're sore losers, but... I, at the same time, like I said, have them get put in something. But don't just have them get put in something that you want. Ask them what do what they like. And, and of course, a kid might not know what they like, so have them put in seven different sports to find out if that's the niche for them. But um, like I said, find them. I recommend that. I recommend this for a fact, that you put every foster child in um, jiu-jitsu, any martial art. I guarantee the way the, the way MMA is going on right now, I guarantee you, you put them kids, I'll give them a lot of self-confidence. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's a lot of good organizations going on right now that, that are messing with foster children. Uh, one of them, I think it's called Fostering Jiu-Jitsu, so big shout out to them. Um, but but they're doing good stuff for foster children. That's pretty cool. And I, and I seen that. I, I, contacted that I, contacted, I contacted them before about that and letting them know like hey that's pretty neat man i praise you guys for that you know they're giving the kids an outlet so like i said uh these kids they have they have a lot of things going on in the mental up here so uh be mindful be be careful how you talk to them be careful how you come at them because they will remember that for the rest of their life growing up as an adult and then then the problems will start happening i know i, I realized the order that i got all these Things didn't matter till now. Now they're starting to hit me understanding them. Like, damn, man. But with that being said, stay mindful to you uh, foster kids that do watch this. You're great. That's a fact. You're great. I'm sorry about what had happened to get you where you're at, but that's not it. That is, that's just the beginning of your story. So... Eventually you're gonna have you're gonna have a good testimony to tell people. Let you be that one. Let you be the one that makes it to tell everybody, like, look, man, I, I came from here, but I made it. Because let me tell you some, the percentage of that happening is bare none. You're already counted out by society, not even by just people, by society. If you look up statistics, which I'm not going to do and all that, because you know what? I know for firsthand, firsthand basis of, of living it. So just know that you're worth it. You can make it. It's never too late. It's never too late to change. It's never too late to uh, reach to the top. You know what I'm saying? Shoot for the moon. Aim for the stars. You know what I mean? Other than that, I hope you guys have a good day. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment. If, hey, you know what? Uh, if there's any other ways that you can get into Foster Shums, comment. Let me know. You know what I mean? Those are just the ones that I've known from growing up. But if there's anything that uh, that bothered you, that... um. That made you feel awkward. That made you feel like like these people don't care about me. Only money. Comment that too. You know what I mean. Let me know how you guys feel because shoot, I want to know. I love I love hearing people's lives because I believe, like I said before, they're all beautiful stories. We just have to channel in what part is the good. Um, yeah, there's bad parts in everybody's life. Everybody has something bad. Everybody does. No one grows up peachy. So it's okay. Like I said, we always we always evolve. As long as you can evolve, then you're all good. Um, don't stay in that mental place where you feel like you're not worth nothing because you're worth everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, me, unfortunately, I got into jiu-jitsu late, but it wasn't because of foster care. It's because my life of crime turned me another route. But now that I'm turned into a, a, a good member of society, jiu-jitsu was my way to reach to the top. And you know what? I get scared, too. And the reason why my, my channel is called Foster Home Feds and Fighting is because at the very end of fighting, it doesn't necessarily mean just because I do jiu-jitsu matches. I'm talking about we fight in life every day with our mental capacity of how to make it better. As long as you you're the battle in your head between right and wrong always ends up with the good, then you're always going to be golden. So with that being said, man, you guys have a blessed day. Stay golden. Stay on top. Don't ever let anyone make you feel like you're not worth nothing because you're worth everything in this world.